everyone it is time for another video from me today i am going to talk about books which comes as no surprise more specifically i'm going to talk about some books that have been on my shelves for the past year or more and that i still haven't read you know what it is like you buy a bunch of new books that you are excited about but you only get to about 70 80 percent of them and then the rest of them you kind of forget about even though you still want to read them but you buy new books that make you push those books in the background so the titles i'm going to show you today are exactly those kinds of books novels that have been standing on my shelves for the past year or more and that i really want to read but for some reason i haven't done that yet so i call them my unread oldies this book i have here i've had for three years now i believe and that is the lives of others by neil mccurdy I bought this back in the days because it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2014. So it must be four years since I bought this. But I bought it with good intentions. I bought it in order to read it. I still haven't read it for some reason. And I was just about to unhold it the other day. But then I decided, no, I have a feeling that this is going to be a splendid story that I really want to read. Next is a book that I found through a blog. And that is Lonesome Reader's Blog. He has a fantastic blog with so many fascinating new titles. And I saw this book on that blog some years ago and I decided to get it. The Nest by Cynthia Deprix Sweeney. Once again, this is one of those books that I was just about to unhaul, but then I read what it's actually about on the inside flap. And it's about a family with problems and I'm a sucker for those kinds of stories. So I immediately put it back on my shelves and now I kind of really want to read it. It is going to happen at some point, but for some reason this book has been neglected. To the Bright Edge of the World by Ewan Ivy. I bought this book because I read The Snow Child by this author some years back and this is one of my favorite Christmassy wintry books out there. I obviously wanted to read another book of hers. So when this author came out with this book, I immediately bought it. I haven't read it. One thing though that keeps me from actually picking up this book is that it is an epistolary. Even though I'm not sure if it's actually letters or if it's just diary entries. But I don't know how, how I feel about that. I'm not sure that that's the kind of story I really want to read. But people have told me that this is an amazing and excellent story, very atmospheric. It takes place in Alaska. It's about this man who goes on a journey through Alaska. And then the diary entries are about his experiences. So people tell me it's amazing. That's enough for me to actually read it since I do own it. And I really do want to read it. At least some part of me does. Let's continue with a beautiful hardback that's not true let's continue with a small paperback and that is the people in the trees by hanya yanagihara you might recognize this author from her book called a little life which is an impeccable story a very devastating story i loved that book so this is another one of those novels that i bought because of the author i still haven't read it i have no idea why i really don't but it is on my list of books that i really want to get to in 2018 so i'm pretty sure that's going to happen but I'm not making any promises. Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. Now, the reason why I still haven't read this, even though I've owned it for years, is because I love, love, love Margaret Atwood. And this is her last novel, at least one of the last ones that I haven't read from hers. And I am eager to read it, but I'm also very hesitant because once I've finished it, I won't have any more novels by her left. And that makes me so sad. So I am holding on to this one, not because I really don't want to read it or have forgotten about it, but because of the reasons I just told you. But it's a story that I really want to read and I think I might do that in spring. Then we have a book by one of my favorite authors. So it is so embarrassing that I still haven't read this book, but I'm talking about Haruki Murakami's Heart Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. I love this author, but this is also my last book of his that I haven't read. And once again, like with Margaret Edward, 
I am hesitant to read it because that will then mean that I have no other books of his to read. And that's not really true. There is another book out that I haven't read yet called After Dark, but I think it makes sense to read this one first and then save After Dark for later. But for some reason I've been very hesitant to read it because I know I'm going to love it. It's magical realism, it's simple storytelling about deep characters, at least if it's like all of the other of Murakami's novels. And I really, I really am a sucker for those novels. Then we have a book that my mother gave me. She started it some years ago. She didn't really feel like she could get into the story, so she gave it to me. I accepted it thankfully because it's one of my favorite authors and then I put it on my shelves and didn't read it. So here we are today with Hotel New Hampshire by John Irving. This is about a bear and a hotel and that's all I know. It sounds pretty bizarre and I think that's also what my mother didn't really like about it, that it was pretty peculiar. But I like that. I feel intrigued to read it, so why haven't I? I don't know. I have three more books left. Next we have What Belongs to You by Garth Green. Well, a very small book, so there's no excuse for not having read it. At least not the length of it, that's not an excuse. But this is about a homosexual man and something about a bathroom. I'm not sure exactly what the story is. I will find out at some point. And also this cover is pretty gorgeous, but it screams summer to me. And I don't know if that's why I haven't read it yet because I haven't had time for it in the past summers. And then now I kind of want to save it for next summer. At least that's the excuse I'm going for. I feel like my language is not very eloquent today, so excuse me if, if I don't pronounce some words exactly as they should be pronounced. Anyway, I don't want to keep stopping and re-saying all of my phrases because I tend to do that and that just makes it even worse. Next book is Idaho by Emily Huskovich, Hus Hus something like that. This gorgeous cover I love eloquency. The thing that has kept me from picking up this book and made me very hesitant as to whether I should keep it or not is the fact that it's about birds and it's a mystery and those two things combined are not really my favorites. So why did I buy this book? That's because it was hyped some years ago. Maybe it's just one year ago, I don't remember. But people talked about it. I was intrigued and I bought it. So here we have it and I might just read it after all since I do own it and I kind of want to read it. But it's one of those books, if I don't really love it from the beginning, I'm not sure I'm going to actually read all of it. And that brings me to the last book, which is actually two books by the same author in the same series. Now, these two huge novels I brought with me all the way from London to Denmark in my suitcase when I went to London with my mother almost two years ago. So you would think that would make me actually read the books once I got home because I had carried them all the way, but no, they are still on my shelves unread. Anyway, I'm talking about Robin Hobb's newest series in her long series of books. This is Fool's Assassin and Fool's Quest. I want to read them. I think that Robin Hobb is really good at setting the ambience of a fantastical setting. And if that makes sense. Whenever I'm in the mood for fantasy, I always gravitate towards Robin Hobb, or I tend to at least, because she writes amazing fantasy stories. And over the years, I have definitely gotten connected with many of these characters in her series. So I'm interested to read more about the fool and this world of assassins and mystery and fantasy. As per usual, I'm all out of breath now. So I better stop this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it and until my next video, happy, happy reading.